Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Kingdom of the First Settlers is an attempt to take the Settlers of Catan universe and expand it a little bit. What they're going to try to do is give individual characters that have been moving around the board and give it a little bit of an RPG flourish, if you will. You'll be upgrading your characters to make them stronger and give them additional components and give them additional options as the game progresses. So you feel like these characters are growing and breathing and being alive. And they do an okay job. Now, so this is an older game, so we've kind of seen things evolve from this point. There's a lot of good things in this game, and I like what they're trying to attempt. Unfortunately, I can't say it's the most fun I've had at a board gaming table, and it kind of shows this age and wear and tear of what's been able to be done since this time. One of the biggest crimes this game is going to commit is that it stays on the table way too long. This game is way too long for what it should be. It needs to be really 30 to 45, maybe an hour long game, and it can go 90 minutes, and I just feel like I'm doing the same thing and not really enjoying myself at all. Also, there's no catch-up mechanism in this game, which is fine. There are a lot of games that do this. Splatter games are kind of known for doing that, but in this game where you want the level to be a little bit lower, where the complexity isn't there, it's not a game that you're going to be getting better and better at. It has a little bit more luck, so you want to make sure there's a catch-up mechanism so you can be out of this game for 45 minutes and just still going through the motions. I really feel like that. Maybe your rich gets richer. There's no real way to catch up in this game. Maybe if Lady Luck is on your side, but I don't see a lot of options for that to occur. The game is okay. I don't think this is something you're going to be like, wow, this is better than the Catan or better than what else is on the market. If you are looking for an interesting game to play that maybe uh, you've never heard of, or you want to go back to the history of the Catan series, this will be something you want to take a look at, but I would kind of keep it right there. This is definitely something I would say, hey, if the Euroness of Catan and the RPG-ish of building up a character and upgrading them is interesting to you, this might be something that you'd want to check out. It is fairly unique in that category, I think. There isn't a whole lot of games that kind of do this. So in that regard, I would say, hey, take a peek at this, see if this interests you, maybe try before you buy on this one. But if this is going to click for you, then I would say maybe you want to take a harder look at it. For me, it's going to be a purge. This is part of the Catan uh, adventure series that came out after Settlers of Catan blew up. This is going to be the Candomir, the first Settlers. We're going to take a look at the components here. It is designed by Klaus Tuber himself. You're going to get a rule book, which we'll set aside and look at in just a moment. You are going to get these little player boards. These are really nice cardboard that you have with all your little information here set up and what you'll be tracking with your health. And it has all your little scores. This game going to have a big RPG attribute to it. So you're going to have four of these enough for all the players. Then you're going to get a board, which has a nice picture on the back side. So if you like that sort of thing, I always find it just a waste. Uh, this will be where the main information is happening. This is more like a stat tracker over here. But it's a really nice board, a lot going on on it, but it's very simple once you start uh, playing it. A custom insert here, coin. I bagged everything up. So you're going to have your little cubes and your tiles. Uh, you're going to have these little cards that you're probably used to if you're playing Sellers of Catan. They're tiny. You know, have the picture of it and then the icons around them. And then you're going to have a bigger set of cards here that will have more story driven or information, like a lumberjack contest here. The artwork is kind of bland. I'm not a huge fan of it. Let's take a little bit more of a detailed look here. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this kind of artwork. There's a wedding, as you can see. Uh, but you know, I'm pretty sure there's a man killer, a bear, a silver wolf, honey for Osman. So a little story driven things you'll do. This game has a huge RPG element to it. And these cards are nice. I mean, they're kind of a little bit better than mass market, of course. Uh, nothing to write home about. And you're going to have a semi um, custom insert with these things that come out. Actually fairly good for this time period. I have to say this is a home run, if you ask me. Really, it's from a different time period. The font is very, very small in this one. Components with no picture. That's a big boo-boo. You know, this is a game from 2004. So you have setup here, a lot to go through here. And then it's going to kind of do an overview of the game, kind of what you're trying to do. This is very, very helpful. And a breakdown of the character's abilities. So some RPG elements. And then what you're going to do on a turn and kind of how that works. You really have two options here in the game. You can explore 
or you can build and brew if available. The name of the game, how you score, and some other little rules that will come, the adventure cards, the events, and how things work if you're blocked, hand limits and stuff. Yeah. Some rules about trading, drinking potions, and character skills. They're going to give you a two-example turn here of a game. I always like stuff like this. I think I, you know, there's room in the book for it. A little bit about the Catan website. I'm not even sure if it's operational anymore. And then a cheat sheet on the back. Uh, the rule book's actually pretty good, especially for its time period. You know, some negatives are the font. Uh, some little bit of information. The rules are actually fairly simple. And no picture of the components, which I don't like. Otherwise, you know, it's not too bad. You'll be up and running. Some of this stuff was a little confusing for me because I'm not an RPG kind of guy. And it does take Catan and push it off a little bit. So it's not exactly like Catan. It's a very different experience. The only thing that's really similar is probably the theme and the trading. So to set up the game, you're going to take these tiles and you're going to put them on top of the area. So this would be like a Forest 3, and you would put it on the Forest 3. If it's a 2 meadow, then you would put it there and so forth. You know, if you have one of these, they would go out. Uh, here's another 2 Forest. So you just kind of match these up, and they'll be randomized somewhat. You know, here's 2 meadows. These are going to be randomized with the other 2s, I guess. So that's kind of how you set that up. So this board, everybody's going to have a character board. This will tell you like what your charisma, your prowess, your agility, and your strength. And if you have potions, they kind of go up here. And how to fight and do some of these encounters that you'll have and how you have strength for the tests that you'll be doing. This over here is how much health you have. So as your health goes down, you can't move as much. So if I go here, I can move four movement, but here will only be a three movement. So that would kind of go into what you're doing here. And as this goes down, you can't move as much, and it kind of all plays together. You have opportunities to upgrade all this, which will be tracked here. So everybody will start with the same board, and then your character will be differentiated as you move on in the game. As the game progresses, you'll get goodies and stuff, but I want to point out that you'll be getting these E's, these experience points. And these experience points will be used to upgrade your character, as I showed you. So, if you look here, you need certain things to upgrade that you'll be utilizing, and these experience points that you'll be gaining, think about an RPG, will allow that to occur. So just kind of be aware of that's what's going on in this game. So what you're going to do in your turn, very simply, is put a goal card. This is the tile that I want to go to, and wherever you're at, you're kind of move that location. Now, depending on where your heart is, so let's say I'm at the full health, I can move four spaces. If I was down here, I could only move one. And you'll be able to move these spaces like so. Then, after you, before you move, you'll be able to flip over one of these movement cards and kind of see what happens. You can see they do all different things here. There's a couple snakes. So let's say I was here and I wanted to move here, and I have this card. I could go up and fight a snake, fight a snake in that direction, uh, the smeltering is there, or go down and nothing would happen. So let's say I was right here. If I go down, nothing would happen. But if I moved up, I would have to have a test encounter with a snake. Same thing if I moved right. If I moved left, I would have this encounter. So that's kind of how this is going to work. You flip one of these over and you can see what's going to happen. It's going to be a big part of the game. It's going to be a big slowdown for the game. But it's going to give you a little bit of an element of where you're moving and things that you'll be seeing. If you ever play like Adventures of Link or Zelda or Dragon World on the old Nintendo, as you move around, you're going to have random encounters, except for you're going to know in advance where things are going to be and if you want to encounter those. If for any reason you don't reach your destination, then your turn is over, the next person will go. If you do reach your destination, you take your goal off, you will flip this over, and you will do whatever is on the other side of the tile. Well, those just happen to be the same. But you can see there's different things on each of the tiles. In this case, I would encounter this. So in this case, I would have encountered this oxen that you would see here, the steer. So that what I would do is I would put a cube on this, thus earning myself a victory point. So whenever you score something, let's say I got one of these guys, I would put one of these cubes out on the board, and I was able to generate these things, I will be able to score more and more as the game progresses. And this is what I'm trying to do is put my cubes out in this area. Now, if you're ever in the village or one of the villages in the game and you want to build or brew, you may do so. Which you look over on this board, you'll see that there are certain things for sorting the wood and to stone, wood, pelt, stone, wood, and to pelt here to create these items. So you can build those items if you're in the village space. And that's very easy to just give up these items that you've had in Settlers of Catan before that you'll be able to give up to build these items. And once you do so, you will have built it. Once again, you can always trade. The first thing you do on any given turn, you can always trade with people or with the bank. If you so choose, come where you found in Settlers of Catan games. 
If you're able to build one of these, very simply, you don't actually get to go. There's no chit. You just put your, so I was going to build a sword. I would put my cube on a sword, scoring myself a victory point. So all the victory points and all the things that you're manufacturing, building, brewing, and gaining are going to be found over on this side of the board. If you want to brew, you can also brew these items. Regardless, potion uh, will require one of each, healing potion one of each, and a mead one of each. And then you'd put the little chit right here on this spot, signifying that you've done it. So the brewing or building is what you can do inside of the village. Now down here at the bottom, you can see there's also opportunities to score here. So these will give you... Uh, extra victory points for obtaining things. So kind of like the longest road in the other game or the actual bonuses that you can get. So if you have the most of these items, then you'll be able to put a cube down here scoring an additional victory point. Now the game is a race to put all your victory point cubes out. If you're the first person to put your, all your victory point cubes out here, you will win the game. Now there is some random turning this over. Oh, I got a victory point. Collecting these items and trading to build this. And then you can also do the same with the brewers and having the most of these items, be able to obtain these special rewards. So it's literally just a race to get these out as quickly as possible. Being in the game, you will sort the adventure cards, one, two, and three deck. But for the most part, if you're on one of these movement spaces that has a question mark, then you will obtain and go through an adventure. And that's when you would take one of these adventure cards and usually have a test for a success or a failure, whatever happens, and a little bit of a story element that will occur. In this case, you had a Midsummer Festival or a young robber. You meet a boy from Olaf's Gang of Robbers. If you can impress the boy, he might tell you they are planning an attack. Then you can warn the village and they will reward you with one ore. If not, then the boy will call the robbers. And you have to pass a test. And if you do, you gain success. If not, you will fail by getting wounded. And you can just go on these little adventures during the game by moving through the board. And this is a really fun part of the game. And something you're going to see a lot later on in other board games that was kind of introduced here in this little, you know, Euro game, if you will, so was Catan series that I think was a huge plus. This game was very much ahead of its time. Who should buy this game? I would say this game is strictly for fans of Catan. If you're a big fan of Catan and you want to go through the series and play some other games in that universe, this is probably one of the better ones to me that gives you something different. You know, it's not just different resources, you're doing something different in the universe, and that's going to be appealing for some people. If you're looking for you know, this little Euro game that includes some RPG elements, this may be something you want to be look, looking at. Also, if you like the history of board gaming, how they expanded the Catan series, this will be something you might want to check out. Maybe not purchase, but at least get it on the table and play it. As for me, this is going to be a purge. It just didn't have staying power for me. And that's how we're going to end this review. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching. And everybody else, keep playing.